finding a healthy, oh yeah. We are back with a double box shrimp of two legends, OP08. It's time to get into this set and talk about stuff. But before we do that, of course, I gotta plug myself. Kaizoku cards, check them out. I just released this double-sided red purple Luffy leader. I think red purple Luffy is gonna be really great in this set because we got some really, really, really strong purple cards, specifically Black Maria. So doing a Dawn minus 10, now all of a sudden doesn't feel so bad when you have this leader and Burak Maria. So check it out, um, Kaizoku cards. I really like red purple Luffy. Uh, this leader is available there as a double-sided leader. So when you do your leader effect, you can flip it over and go Ultra Instinct. And I just love this art. You may see it over my shoulder. This is probably my favorite Luffy art I've ever commissioned. All the artist names are right there. This is by Kevin Muniz, K29. You can check them out. But enough about my shiny cards. Look, let's look at Bandai's shiny cards. So I thought for this Shrip'em series, you know, if you're new to new here, I, basically what I do is I, I strip them some boxes and I just kind of talk about stuff. And I think for this, this series of Shrip'ems, or for this case of OP08, which I'm hoping is gonna be alternating with OP09 every other week based on how I can get my recording done. But the idea is I thought I'd talk about what it's like being a content creator and how to get into content creating. And is content creating worth it? And blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> many of you may know the story, oh, I gotta bless them a pack, of how I got into content creation. So I really started actually with this game called Marvel Contest of Champions. And the reason why I started playing Marvel Contest of Champions was because I really liked this video game and I thought, you know, I think I have some funny jokes I can make. I'm going to start making some videos. I was in dental school at the time. I had some free time on my hands. So I started making videos of Marvel Contest of Champions and I would love to see the alt art of this. I've not seen an alt art of this guy. And I had a lot of fun with it. And um, eventually I actually quit that game. I got a pretty bad addiction to it, to be honest. And so I quit that game. Let me just fix this light here to get a little bit more light on here. I quit that game and I started playing the Dragon Ball Super Card game, um, which at the time, Bandai used to do more collaboration with uh, content creators. They don't do quite as much these days, but um, they contacted me and started sending me cards and I was working with them, but that ended for a reason I will not get too into, but it involved the Super Mario Brothers hat. And yeah, so I really got into the One Piece card game, really enjoy the One Piece card game. There's a secret, Rayleigh. I think this card's actually kind of good. I just don't think red is gray right now, but I think it could be good later. But I think Shanks is gonna be the good red deck and I think you need to play Shanks stuff in the Shanks deck. Unfortunately, they do not share a trait. Um, but yes, so uh, I think one of the things for me with content creation was it was never meant to be a career path. There was a point when I started it where I was like, oh, I think I could make this as a career path because I was starting to get a lot of followers and started making a little bit of money. But the truth is, if you're looking to make money making YouTube videos, I would advise not doing it because the amount of time that you have to put in, putting that amount of time into something else, you get a degree, you could get a, a job instead of real career. Wow, look at that, that's a wiper. It's my second one of these. I opened one in the case opening video, you may have seen it. But I will need a place out of this man because I do want to play Kalgara. And unfortunately, there's a lot of just double hit boxes. So it's very likely that this box is just gonna be two hits, unfortunately. Uh, it's a 50-50 chance, actually, that we might not have another hit in this box. But yeah, so I was having a lot of fun with it. And um, I think, if you invest the amount of time that you invest into creating a YouTube channel and creating consistent content, and, and granted, I'm not the most consistent with my content. I put out like one video a week. People that are really on the grind put out like multiple videos a week. And, and I think you could see a little bit of money for it, from it, but it's really a passion-based thing. If you're not passionate about what you're creating content for, there's no point in doing it. And I, and I don't think it's a safe thing to say, okay, I want this to be my career path that I'm gonna be making YouTube videos. I think it's kind of, um, you're setting yourself up for not great time. This card is really good. Cause yeah, your time could just be better invested elsewhere. Shrip them. But um, with all that being said, I figured I'd talk a little bit about what my method is. So um, when I make YouTube videos, I, my time is much more limited now. 
So I don't really have see that was a double hit box. Doesn't that suck? Like half of these half of this case is just gonna be two hits. <sighs> so bad, so bad. Um, I don't have a ton of time to make YouTube videos. So I have to really fit it into my schedule during the week because I'm also a dentist. I also have a card company that I make these custom cards. So I'm designing stuff and commissioning things and messaging with people. And I have a small team that helps me out, but I would say the majority of the work I, I handle and balancing everything while also, you know, I just bought a house. I'm getting married in a year and gonna probably start having kids not too long. So all this stuff, you know, you have to figure out how to balance all these things and, and YouTube and gaming, it can really get in the way of that. So I think finding a healthy, oh yeah, healthy. Heck yeah, that's, I think that's all I need because I really just want two, I want to run two of these and two of the other one. I still love the original art so much, but this is like all I'm looking for in this set. So I'm kind of like set. I wonder if we're going to get an SP in this because the last one we opened, the last Treasurer Luffy opened, it was an SP and a, what was it? It was an SP and a, and a secret in that box. So maybe that's what we'll see in this one. It'd be interesting to see if that's consistent. Um, but yeah, you have to you have to really strike balance. So so my method is I basically I get a couple cases of each set. I pre-order them months and months and months in advance. And I know a lot of people ask me, Joku, where do you get your cases? I get them from Greg's Games, and I pre-order them eight months out in advance. And I really helped them the store get the cases. So I have a kind of a special relationship with them. Um, but I think One Piece is gonna become a lot more accessible soon. I'm also thinking about selling some of my collection on Kaizo Good Cards. If you're interested in getting sealed One Piece product from Kaizo Good Cards, let me know in the comments. That's something I'm, I'm considering doing, maybe doing like signed boxes with messages on them. There's a dawn. Um, but yeah, so I get my boxes and I open them like in a day or two days. I usually do one case opening video. I do one live stream where I open a case live. And then I open two boxes at a time. Uh, I make six videos and those six videos get posted over six weeks. And then I take a break pretty much. Um, unless there's some Japanese content I really wanna make. I did not record my OP08 Japanese opening because I didn't, I don't care that much for this set. Um, really, this card is all I want from this set, and this is just in English. So, I didn't, but OP09, I definitely want to open OP09, and I have a case to open live. There's a carrot, very nice, alt art, pull, so that's not an SP. And uh, I'll open some in some videos. So, I'm gonna have about 12 weeks of content out of these two cases. That's about three months. That should put us about at the English release of set nine. So I'm also all right taking a couple weeks off, but I record everything and then I post it over a couple weeks. Wow, two two hit boxes, what a bust. But I'll continue this conversation and my technique in the next video. So tune in next week and I'm gonna record it right after this, but you're gonna see it next week and I'm gonna record it, I'm gonna edit it. Well, I'll get to that. Anyway, these are our pulls, four pulls, four things. I have two boxes, kind of bad. So that's kind of a bummer, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, that's it. I am a dentist, I can't, I have a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be, if you have pain in your jaw, if you have temporomandibular mandibular discomfort, your temporal mandibular joint is the bilateral joint of your jaw. If that joint is painful or uncomfortable, try and go to your dentist and ask them if your bite seems even. A lot of times the reason why you get pain in your jaw is because you're either playing with your bite, grinding your teeth, or your bite is not even, and straightening your teeth is a solution to getting a more comfortable jaw and bite. Thanks for coming by and I'll see y'all next week.